Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Sophie Hannah here. I hope you're all well and staying safe. We're gonna be candle making today. You guys commented so much on my candle making weekly vlog. I've had so many DMs about candle making. It's crazy, like I didn't realize you guys would be so interested in my new hobby. And yeah, honestly, I've been loving candle making and I thought because I'd received so many like questions and stuff about it, I would do a dedicated candle making video. And I know you guys have been looking forward to this video because I've mentioned a few times that I'm gonna be doing it. So before I get into the video, please could you subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave a comment. We're gonna be doing a giveaway. So that will be part of the giveaway. Basically my videos, I feel like I've been doing YouTube for so long and they've just not been pushed out. Like YouTube is not pushing my videos out. So it'll be super helpful and I'd be so appreciative if you guys could subscribe, like and comment to boost my video and get, get it out there because yeah, it's sad. I put so much into my YouTube channel and it's really annoying when YouTube is just not pushing out my videos. But anyway, guys, candle making. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. It's amazing that you guys have even said this, but you've asked me if I'm going to be selling my candles. The fact that you think my candles look like shop worthy is amazing. So thank you so much. But obviously launching a shop, it's a lot of effort. Um, I'd have to do a website. I'd have to figure out how I'm going to post everything. And it's just too much when I, you know, I'm a content creator. So instead, I thought I would give away some candles and I'm giving away all of the candles that I'm making in today's video. So there will be seven winners and to enter, all you need to do is subscribe, like and comment below which candle you want to win. So obviously watch the video, watch me make the candles and comment below which candle you would like to win. I will let you guys know some of them are in pairs, some of them are on their own and I'll let you know as we go along. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited to get into this video, guys, and I really, really hope it is informative and answers all of your questions and, yeah, just helps you out because this is probably my sixth time making candles now. And when I featured it in my weekly vlog a few weeks ago, it was probably my first or second time making them. And I've changed my technique since then. And yeah, I've, I've just been working on a few things. I've kind of done a bit of research. I've ordered some more molds. And yeah, right, let's get candle making, guys. So first things first is prep your molds. So I've got a lot of these silicon molds. So these are from numerous places. So I will link all of them below, but I've got quite a few. So I've got this one, which is a Virgin Mary. I got that from AliExpress. I've got a Cherub Angel from AliExpress. I also got these Praying Hands from AliExpress. The nude one is from Etsy. And actually, these are some new molds that I recently got here. These are so cute. I'm actually going to make these ones for myself. So these won't be in the giveaway because I'm going to try them out because I haven't actually tested them yet. But all of these ones will be in the giveaway. I'm also going to do the bubbles because I know you guys love the bubbles. We're going to do the bubble candles. I've got a little one and a big one. And then I've also got the shells. I've got a baby shell and I've got a large shell. So I'm going to prep all of the molds. And that is the first thing that you will do. So the first thing you're going to need is your wick. So we've got this cotton kind of thread wick here, which is on a roll, which is great. And I've also got this style of wick, which you would put in a container candle and it's got the metal bit on the end. These are great because they're quite stiff and they stay straight. Another thing that you'll need, which is super useful, is a big, like large head needle where you can fit the thread through at the top. I just, I just got these from Amazon. Then we're gonna cut our thread and we're gonna cut fairly long strips because we want to make sure that when we are threading through our mold we've got the wick that comes out of both ends quite a lot because we can trim it down at the end so i'm going to start off with my bubble candle mold and what we're going to do is we've threaded the wick through the needle and then i'm going to find the center of the middle bubble because that's where i want the wick to go through at the top and where you obviously you're going to light the candle and you're gonna pop the needle through the silicone mold out the other side 
thread it through so it will end up looking like this so I've got the small bubble mold now and I'm just going to make a little incision at the top in the center and push that needle through sometimes it could be a little bit stiff and then once that's through oh, there we go another one done and then I'm just going to pop that aside and we'll keep doing that basically to all of the molds Onto my nude lady. So you need to have a look inside the mold and we can see where the top bit is. See that little circle there? You're going to want to put your finger on it. So you can kind of, well, this has already got a hole in at the top. But you want to basically make an incision at the centre of where the top of the candle is. So you just need to make sure you get that right. This mold has already been pre-cut, which is great. But I'll show you in a minute, some of my other moulds I had to cut myself because I couldn't get the candles out without damaging the candles. So sometimes you have to cut the silicone and it's fine because we can secure them with elastic bands, which I'll show you in a minute. So yeah, that is my nude lady done. As you can see, the, the wick is coming out of the top and the bottom. And as you can see around the top here, let me come in like the wax is not gonna be dripping out the bottom of that. That's why I love the silicone molds. They work really, really well. So my next two molds, I've got the praying hands. So this one I had to cut myself. So when I cut it, I just thought about like the placement of my incision. Um, I cut it with a scalpel, let me show you. I bought this little scalpel kit from Amazon. Really, really works because it's super sharp and it makes a very, very like neat cut. Um, so yeah, so I cut it at the back of the prayer hand and to be honest, like when the silicone, cause it's quite sticky, it really does kind of just go back together as you can see, like you can't really see the slit now and then that's held in place with elastic bands or I use my wick and I tie it around like string. Um, so yeah, it doesn't affect the candle at all, but you've just got to make sure you cut it in the right place. So with my angel wings, I cut it down the side of the wing and yeah you can't really tell to be honest and the silicone is so thick as well it's not really interfering with the design or anything like that and again once it's kind of stuck together it doesn't really move but you do have to secure it with string or an elastic band or something to really hold this bit together because it can open when you pull the wax in and obviously the wax will go everywhere that happened to me you don't want it to happen to you because it went absolutely everywhere and all over my floor. Okay, so I've threaded through the wick on both of those moulds and now I'm going to put those aside and I'll show you how to do the Virgin Mary. So this one is quite a tall one, so I'm going to have to use a long bit of thread for this and I'm just going to position that down at the centre. Pop on the top and make sure that's all pressed in and secure. Right, I'm going to move that aside and not touch it. Leave that. Let's do ooh, the shells. So these are the shell moulds. Let me just open up the bigger one. So they come as like a two piece and then they come with elastic bands, which are super useful. And you can use these for other candle making bits as well. Um, so what we're going to do is for this one, I'm going to be using the container kind of candle wick because it's super, super straight and it can go through like so. And also it's thicker than the thread because I will show you a close up. Don't know whether you guys can see, but there is a little bit of a gap around where the wick is. So we need to cover that with some blue tack. So as you can see with the large one, the wick moves in and out. So obviously we're going to get some leakage. So just grab some blue tack, bend the wick at the end and then I'm just going to put blue tack and press it in around where the hole is where I would get leakage and just kind of press it in and secure that down and hopefully we won't get leakage if we do the, the wax dries really quick so it's not too bad and you can just top up the top that's why I always kind of do my candle making on a chopping board on a, just a wooden one and it's really easy to clean and get the wax off once it's dried so I've left 
some wick at the end of the shell and at the top I've bent it over and I'm going to add blue tack to the small shell just in case we get any leakages on that one as well. Now for these plastic moulds they're so difficult to get the wax out so a little tip I read online pop on some vegetable oil onto a kit piece of kitchen roll and just oil up the inside ever so slightly and that should help get the wax out when it's dried and again for this one I'm going to need blue tack over the top of the hole to stop any leaks now it's time to pop on elastic bands or string to hold the moulds in place when you pull the wax in so the shells come with elastic so I'm just going to pop that on and there's little slits that it goes in to be fair two of them pretty much hold it in place but I will do four just in case and then the small one comes with small elastic bands there we go so that is ready to go time for the big candle elastic bands again so just be careful you need to like quite you know hold this in place because we've already set our wick in place and I just go over like this and I put a few of these on this bit is basically the trickiest bit and the longest bit of candle making is just preparing all of your molds uh, but we want to make sure that when we're doing our molds that the elastic bands are not interfering with the pattern on the inside and changing it so sometimes you know you don't want these elastic bands to be too tight obviously you want them to be tight enough so there's no leakages but you don't want them to be so tight that they ruin the shape of the candle that you're making right that one looks pretty good so I've popped three on that one so for the prayer hands and the angel I am going to be using some string I've actually just used the wick but the great thing about that is I can reuse this afterwards and all I'm going to do is tie it in a little knot not too tight you want it tight enough that you don't see the cut seam but not tight enough that you ruin and alter the shape of your design so they are both done I've tied the wick string around them and yeah they are ready to be poured now for the nude lady another elastic band right and she's all secured now the final step of the prep of the molds is popping on something that is going to hold the wick in place so I've got these which are actually for the top of container candles so these are the ones that kind of balance across I've also got these ones which I got from Amazon and I've also got ones that came with some other candle molds which are these ones here I've actually already got leftover string and wax on there but yeah we can reuse that so I've got a couple of options to hold the wick because you want to hold the wick in the center you don't want it to lean to the side so obviously when you burn the candle you want it to burn straight down the middle so that is all of my molds prepared now so yeah a little bit long-winded getting it all prepared and started but now we're at the point where we can melt the wax add the color the fragrance and start pouring so as you can see i'm going to zoom in the wick goes through the hole and there's a little slit that kind of keeps it taut and in place these ones i've just leaned the wick over the top another little tip you can pop some blue tack on the top and stick the wick to it on the little um stick to keep that in place right on to the wax so there are two different types of wax that you can get there is pillar wax and there is container wax and there's so many different types in terms of soy wax beeswax paraffin wax i get soy wax um it's just more eco-friendly and i've been getting on with it really really well the only thing i found at the start was that i was getting a lot of um frosting which is like kind of like a white 
um, kind of pigmentation to the wax and air bubbles, but touch wood, I now don't get those things and I will give some tips on how to not get those things later on in the video. But yeah, so I use soy wax. Now, the difference between container wax and pillow wax is the fact that pillow wax is for these candle molds because the wax is harder and it shrinks during the cooling process, meaning that it's easy to get out of the molds and it's not gonna stick to the sides. Whereas container wax is softer and it sticks, you know, and stays in the shape of the container and, you know, kind of forms the shape of it and sticks to the sides. I've um, actually tried using pillow wax in a container and it leaves a ring around the edge because it, it shrinks, it doesn't stick to the sides of the container. So that's just a little difference between the two waxes. Now, I should be using pillow wax, but I've only got container wax. But I have to say, I tried it recently on some of my molds and actually it worked. So yeah, today I'm using container wax, but I would be using pillow wax. It's just that it is so hard to get soy pillow wax at the moment because I think everyone is candle making. So I ended up just getting, yeah, and also I messed up an order and I thought I was ordering pillow wax, ordered container wax, and I wanted to reuse it. I didn't want to send it back because you know, it, was just, it was just effort. Um, but yeah, so I have got container wax, but it's absolutely fine. I've found that I've got on with it. Uh, but that's just, yeah, personal experience. But obviously, if I could choose, I would use pillow wax. And my new technique of melting the wax. So I used to do it on the hob, but it was a very lengthy process. Instead, now I do it in the microwave. So you're going to need a Pyrex jug. I've got a bag of Eco Soy Wax. So I am going to pop the wax in my Pyrex jug Ooh. and I fill it up all the way pop it in my microwave and you're going to want to put the microwave on two minute intervals so yeah I'd suggest putting the microwave on two minute intervals and then getting out the wax giving it a stir putting it back in for two minutes so that means you can just keep an eye on it and make sure everything is okay so as you can see, the wax is melting nicely already. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a stir and then pop it back into the microwave. Now the Pyrex jug is gonna be getting hot at this point. So make sure you use a tea towel. Put it back in for another two minutes. Whilst that's melting, guys, I wanna tell you about the next step. You wanna grab yourself a digital thermometer because we need to read the temperature of the wax. So I've done a bit of research on this. Don't quote me, but I've just, yeah, looked at blog posts and stuff. I will pop a list below of really useful sites in case you want any more information on candle making. But yeah, so I've worked out that I add the fragrance and I add the color at 65 degrees. You don't want to let your soy wax go over 75 degrees and I pour it at around 60 to 65 degrees. And when I do that, I've noticed that I hardly get any frosting and I hardly get any air bubbles. And I pour it very, very slowly. So yeah, you just wanna grab one of these and test the temperature when your wax is pretty much all melted. So this is the wax after four minutes, guys. Pretty much all melted, which is great. Then I've got these two other, ooh, containers so I used to actually melt my wax in these over the hob but I've kept them because these are great for mixing your fragrances and colors especially if you're doing lots of different colors at the same time so I'm gonna do orange in one and like a green in another I want to try and do like a, pe a peach and a mint green so that's all melted let's see what the temperature is so I'm just gonna pop that in and wait it's going up and up so we want that to not be any more than 75, really. Um, but we want it to be about 65 to add the fragrance and the colour. And then we're ready to pour. So we're getting there. Okay, we're nearly there. A little bit under, but that's absolutely fine. That's probably just going to make it a little bit better. Pouring it, definitely not going to have any air bubbles or frosting. In it goes... 
Here's my fragrance oil. I got this from AliExpress. I think it's similar to black opium YSL perfume. When it comes to adding fragrance oil online, it says you add about 5% ratio to how much wax you have. I have no idea because I've not measured this. I mean, I think you are meant to measure it, but I just pop in a couple of little drops. Then I stir. Now we can add the color. So I actually got these colors here from eBay, I think, or Amazon, I can't remember, but I'll link it below. This one is orange. Soy wax, when it is hardened, is white. So make sure you remember that when you are pouring in your colors, because obviously it's gonna look very, very light, um, because essentially it's gonna be like orange mixed with white, it's gonna make peach. So we don't wanna to go too heavy with the color. I always like to start with a tiny drop. So I'm gonna pop in the tiniest drop and then we'll stir that in. Yes, looking so good. A little tip on how to test what color it's gonna come out like. I just grab my spoon, pop a little bit on my chopping board and then I just quickly wait for that to dry. And then you can see the color starting to come through. So it's quite faint, so I think I wanna put in another little drop. Right, stirring that together. Okay, I feel like, I mean, these are all the drops here, but I feel like that's gonna dry a little bit darker. That looks like a nice color, guys. So when you pour your wax, be mindful of how much wax you have in terms of how much it takes to fill a mold up because the time it takes for you to then redo your wax with the exact same color, which is obviously gonna be hard. Yeah, the time it takes to do that, the wax would have already hardened in your mold if you needed to top it up. So make sure that you are pouring the right amount of wax into your mold. It's quite hard, but the more you do it, the more kind of you know how much it takes to fill up the mold. Right guys, time to pour. I'm gonna go for the nude lady. So we're just gonna have to pour this very, very gently into the mold. Oh, this is really hard holding a camera and doing this. And we'll fill her all the way to the top. Right, next one, I'm gonna go for the praying hands now. Cause I reckon I've got enough mold, mold. I've got enough wax for the mold. So we're gonna pour that very slowly. Oh, gotta have steady hands for this. Oh, the perfect amount. Still got some left. I reckon that'll fit in the small shell if I can get in there. Okay, in to the small shell. Whoa, looks so nice. Oh, okay, you've got to be careful here. Very slowly. Oh, a little bit too much, there we go. I've still got some left over, but I'm actually gonna utilize that and mix some more wax, and I'm gonna make some more peachy wax. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Guys, can we see the wax cooling already in my shell? Look how beautiful that peachy tone is. Just melted some more wax and testing the temperature. Cool, we are getting close to the 65 degrees mark. Might have squeezed in a little bit too much orange, but yeah, we can do a brighter orange candle. I think it will look cool. Gonna add a few more drops of the fragrance oil. Give it another stir. Gonna pour this one into the cherub angel. Very slowly. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And also guys, little tip, if you do get any little bubbles, if you just tap the edge, it should help get rid of any and settle the wax. This one there, I see. I'm gonna pop it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna fill these ones up. I wanna try and do split candles and I'll show you guys how to do it. So we're gonna start with the first color, which is gonna be the orange. I'm gonna pull that in a little bit. Try and match it up with the other side. Perfect, had enough wax to fill both those up halfway. Let's melt some more wax. Ooh. Next lot of wax melted. I've added the fragrance and now I'm gonna add a tiny dollop of green. Maybe a tiny bit more. 
Oh, get off. There we go. And hopefully this is going to be like a minty green. Oh my God, it's gone really dark. This is when I panic, but hopefully it'll be okay. So I'm going to test it again. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to attempt to pour this in my Virgin Mary and hope that it fills her all the way up. I've already tested the temperature and it's great. Got still going. Still going. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That is just perfect. Just. Oh my God. Just. <laughs> right, I'm going to mix up a bit more of the mint green because I need to do the bubble, the shell and finish off the other half of my pillar candles. Mixed up more mint green. Let's pour it in. I'm going to go with the bubble. Super slow. Ooh. And the bubble's deceiving. It actually takes quite a lot of wax. So I've just pulled the shell and it didn't quite fill it up. So I'm quickly melting some more wax to try and, yeah, pull the rest in. But fingers crossed it goes okay. I was quick at melting some more wax. So let's top up the shell. It's a fairly similar colour. There we go. Perfect. Okay, that looks like it's blended okay. You just have to be super quick at that. Right, pretty much all there now. I just need to top up my pillow candles. Adding the last bit of wax. And this is for my split pillow candles that I'm making for myself. This is gonna look wicked in my living room. There we go, slowly does it. Look at that split, got that just right. Great, all the wax is now in the moulds and I'm gonna let that set for about six to eight hours. Then I'll be back to show you how to get the candles out of the moulds and the finished candles, I'm so excited. And then yeah, guys, make sure you check out the candles, keep watching because you need to comment below which one you want to win. Guys, the candles have been left for six hours. Let's get them out of the molds. Right, getting the molds out, we're gonna be super careful. We're gonna pull the mold away from the candle very carefully. Doing this with nails is quite difficult, I have to say. Okay, guys, I've got it. I got it. Oh my God. Come on. Okay. Ah, oh, beautiful. Little bit of frosting in the top bits there, but apart from that, we've got no air bubbles or anything. It looks super smooth. I love the color. Right, so that's one out. And then all we're gonna do is trim the wick. So we are gonna cut the bottom off. And then you're gonna wanna leave a little bit for the wick at the top, like so. The nude lady take the elastic bands off now she can be quite difficult you don't want to basically get her arm caught in the top so we're going to peel back the silicon she looks great and then we're going to pull it back but try and push her out at the same time but you just got to be careful because sometimes her arm gets caught and it can snap off so but I think, come out. She's she's out, she's pretty much out. I'm just gonna, oh my God. Oh my Lord. She is beautiful. Trim the top of the wick. Oh, don't let her fall over because her boobies will get damaged. But yeah, this is the nude in this beautiful peach. Let's do a shell. So yeah, this is all just about being super careful, super slow and steady. And um, yeah, so when it comes to doing the shell, you wanna take the blue tack off after you've taken the elastic band off. Then this can be a bit tricky, but you basically wanna pull apart the, 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 the mold, but sometimes it can be quite hard. So just give it a bit of a tap. 
that sometimes helps. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Woohoohoo! Okay, to get the other part off, I hold it like this, pull out and press up, and it comes out like that. Beautiful! Yes, trim the wick. Make sure the blue tack is off. Trim at the bottom. Voila. Onto the praying hands now. So this one can be a little bit tricky as well, but we're just pulling back that silicon and trying to push that out like so. There we go. She's out, she's out, she's out. Oh my God. Guys, there's hardly any frosting and no air bubbles. I'm so pleased. Small bubble came out super well. So good. So getting out the angel, I'm pushing from her head and pulling it apart. And she should come out in a second. Here she is, here she is. Oh, beautiful. Tiny little bit of frosting here and around her arm. But apart from that, she looks great. Getting the baby shell out now. Come on. So cute. Came out so well. I do like the shells. Lift off that half. Ooh. And then pull out the sides. This one's a bit easy to get out. Come on. Say that. Unreal. Guys, unreal. Now, getting the moulds out of these is honestly one of the hardest things. It takes a lot of banging. A lot of banging like down both sides and yeah. You just got to keep banging until it comes out. I'll do that and then hopefully I'll be able to show you what they look like. I've been banging for ages and they're not coming out. So I'm just going to run it under some warm water to see if it loosens from the edges. I'm just going to try. We're just going to ignore those candles because they are not coming out. Basically, I did think this might happen. I've used a mold similar before that's round but you were able to take the top bit off where you where the top of the wick is and then you could push from the bottom up and you could push the mold out whereas with that the lid doesn't come off it's just one like one bit is open so you have to basically bang it around and try and get it out but you can't like with those you need to be able to push it out really also it doesn't help that i used container wax because if I used pillow wax, then it would have basically shrunk a little bit and it would be easy to get out. So probably going to have to lose those, which is a shame. But you saw how to layer two colours together. So yeah, I hope seeing that process kind of helped you with that if you are hoping to do that with some of your own candles. But yeah, not going to recommend those moulds. I think I got them off AliExpress, but yeah, not going to recommend those. Anyway, these are my finished candles. These are the finished candles, guys. How beaut do they look? So yeah, these are the candles. I'm going to pop on the screen which ones go together. So we've they're pretty much all on their own, apart from the two small one so the small shell and the small bubble will come together and then the rest are on their own so please comment below which number you would love to win so i've numbered them one two three four five six and seven
you guys found this video really informative. I, yeah, tried to go into detail and offer you some little tips along the way. I have linked everything below, so I've, I'll, I'll section it out. So I'll have a list of links for all the molds. I'll do all of the kind of candle making kind of kit bits. I didn't really get a whole kit. I kind of bought everything separately, but yeah, a lot of it you can get on Amazon or eBay, but I will link it all below and include some great website links if you want more information or details or anything and yeah i'll also link a couple of other websites that i found really great in terms of getting supplies for my candle making but yeah please like this video subscribe to my channel if you're not already and comment below which number candle you would love to win for the giveaway and yeah honestly guys thank you so much for watching i love the fact that you guys are really into this crafty diy hobby like me it's really honestly like got me through lockdown here in the uk it's so therapeutic and like really satisfying when you open up the mold and see your creations and then being able to light them or just have them displayed in your house is amazing but yeah, so that is it from me, guys. Actually, I just wanted to say, so I gold leafed a couple of my candles in my first vlog of candle making. And someone said, can you burn them? Now, I've never burnt my candles with gold leaf on before. I tend to kind of want to keep them because I think they look quite pretty. But I know a lot of other companies that do sell gold leafed candles. So I do believe you can burn them. Um, but don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna love you and leave you there, guys. I feel I, I think I've answered all your questions, but if I've missed anything, please comment below and I will do my best at getting back to you and offering you any advice. Obviously, I'm new to this, I'm not a professional candle maker, I'm not experienced whatsoever. This is like my sixth time making them. But you guys are so interested, and it is a DIY, it's a it's a do-it-yourself, you know. I might mess up. Like, look, I messed up my two pillar candles. Don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I'll try and get them out somehow. But yeah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't go right the first time. It takes practice and sometimes it goes wrong. Thank God they all went right for you guys though. You, you all got your candles. Um, but yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have another go at making some for me. Although I have got a lot in the house already. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon. Peace out. Take care.